Another month done, and that can only mean another month of solar stats. Yet again, not quite as good as the sunshine we had in 2023 for February, but improving all the time. We also had one extra day this month, with it being a leap year this year, so let's have a look at the difference that made to the figures. Stay tuned for more. Hi everyone, I'm Dan EV Solar, and on this channel you can follow my journey all things EVs, renewables, energy tariffs, solar and much more. If you want to be kept up to date on my journey, please consider subscribing to my channel, and if you find this video useful, also give it a like as well. And that helps it reach a wider audience and hopefully helps more people make positive decisions on renewable energy. In this video I'm going to be discussing my stats for my February solar generation. As a reminder of my system I have a 6.32 kilowatt peak solar array with a give energy 9.5 kilowatt hour battery and a 5 kilowatt hybrid inverter. So we're into March and spring is really starting to spring once and for all. It's felt like it's been a long winter with persistent grey spells and lots of wet weather. Thankfully, in the northeast, we did see some sunny days towards the end of February, which has picked up the figures a bit from what they were, and hopefully that's a taste of things to come for the rest of the year. I'm really a big fan of this time of the year when we start seeing longer days, new growth, and much more sunshine. Make sure you let me know in the comments what you think of spring, and also how your solar generation got on this month. I'm always interested to hear. As it was a leap year, we also had one extra day to add to our solar generation for February, but it was around 13% down, on 2023's figure. And if we start by looking at the generation, we had a total generation figure of 168.33 kilowatt hours. Now, I think this figure is a little bit lower than the actual amount. As you can see on the 16th of February, the graph states that I generated just 0.2 kilowatt hours, which I believe is completely wrong. Uh, when I look on my Octopus app, that says I exported 2.42 kilowatt hours. So the generation must have been higher than this, probably around about 4 kilowatt hours for the day. So in the end, not too far off last year's total, maybe 10% down. I'm not entirely sure what happened on this day, but I remember a day where I looked on the Give Energy app and the battery seemed to be in like a kind of frozen state. So I'm not sure if that's what caused this. A quick reset of the app and that seemed to fix the issue. So 43 kilowatt hours of what I generated went back to power my home usage. 16 kilowatt hours went into charging my battery and 108 kilowatt hours went back to the grid. If you've watched my other videos, you'll know that I'm currently charging my battery overnight on the 7.5 pence per kilowatt hour tariff Intelligent Octopus Go. And that means that I can export anything that I generate back to the grid at 15 pence per kilowatt hour. This is a fantastic tariff now with that greater export rate and even better when you combine it with solar and battery as well. And if you'd like to join Octopus, it would be great if you could use my referral link that's on screen now. If you sign up using this link, you get £50 credit added to your account when you join, and I also get £50 as well. And this will allow you to sign up to the great tariffs that Octopus offer, such as the Intelligent Octopus Go tariff, and the Tracker tariff, and many others. Thank you to everyone that signed up using this link so far. As you can see, the weather picked up towards the end of the month quite dramatically and combined with some longer days created some really good generation figures. The best day of the month was on the 24th of February where my system generated 13.94 kilowatt hours. And I'm going to give the worst day award to the 4th of February with just 1.5 kilowatt hours as the 16th appears to be an error that's reporting incorrectly. So much better than January's figures overall. If we move on to look at how that compares with the rest of the time since I've had this system installed, as you can see, February followed a similar pattern to January this year in that it was slightly lower than 2023's generation, 192 kilowatt hours last year versus 168 kilowatt hours for this year, but really starting to ramp up now as we move to those longer days. So this is the best, worst and average generation chart, and as you can see, the 2024 average generation was slightly lower in 2023 as you'd expect however the best day was actually improved slightly on last year and if we look in more detail at the best day for generation on the 24th of february as you can see a really decent day however once the generation dropped off it literally dropped off a cliff so i assume it got a bit cloudy as the day went on and that's what caused the drop off but a really good generation for the day maximum generation we saw during that day was 2.4 kilowatts and uh, I've had a few questions in the comments asking why I don't fully export the battery at the end of each day to maximise my profits. And there's a couple of reasons for this. One is that we're probably talking about maybe 40 to 50 pence profit per day. 
So around about £15 per month, which, although is reasonable, it puts the extra cycles on the battery that could potentially shorten its life a little. So right now I've just decided to uh, not do that and just try and maintain the battery for as long as I can. This may change in the future, but we'll see. What I might start doing is, uh, once the solar starts supporting the house on its own, I might start pausing the battery so any solar that's exported instead of charging the battery that would go back to the grid and maximize the profits but I think I need some automation to do this effectively so we'll look into that and see. And if we next look at the grid import and remember this is not necessarily true home usage it's more for charging the battery overnight and what goes into that and also what we move the usage from the home to the overnight tariff to make the most of that seven and a half pence per kilowatt hour rate. And as you can see, the import varied between 1.12 kilowatt hours and 9.85 kilowatt hours, which is actually more than my battery capacity. So there was obviously some grid import during the day as well, um, above what the inverter could draw from the battery, or potentially we ran the washer overnight. I can't remember exactly. Next is the home consumption, which was again around about average, excluding EV charging. This is for at around about 160 kilowatt hours. Uh, the 16th again as you can see is displaying a little bit low but generally ranging between 3 kilowatt hours and 8 kilowatt hours of usage per day so pretty standard with our normal usage. EV usage was again around about the same minus the house usage that equated to 372 kilowatt hours. Thankfully we had all of the data this month displaying on the My Energy app which is a relief and as you know if you watch my previous videos we've had quite a few times during the last few months where we've just had missing data where it appears to lose the connection to the Wi-Fi and as you can see I've charged up the car roughly every three to five days keeping the battery at roughly between 20 to 80 percent most of the time where I can. Grid export is now certainly on the rise again with the longer days now too and that equated to 115 kilowatt hours of export this month. For the outgoing export rate at 15 pence per kilowatt hour with Octopus that equates to around £17 in credit and this should only continue to rise as we move into the spring and summer months which is great. You'll also notice the three blue spikes in this chart as well. These were the days where we had saving sessions and I exported the battery directly back to the grid during this time to maximise the savings there. And while not a massive difference this month, it certainly helped again just to reduce the bills a little bit. And if we move on to look at the payback of the system, so consumption 161.83 kilowatt hours. Um, import on the cheap rate was 123.1 kilowatt hours. Um, I've actually not broke this down. I, what I tend to do now is just look at the average across the bill, which is around about eight pence this month, which was great. Um, so that equated to import costs of nine pound eighty five to power my home. And the generation from the solar was 168.33, as I mentioned, and 115 exported back to the grid, which equates to 17 pounds and 28 pence exported back to the grid. And as I mentioned last month, I've been comparing this now with some other tariffs as well, just to see how the savings vary. Uh, last month, the Intelligent Octopus Go produced the leaf savings if I was on that tariff and didn't have solar installed. Um, if we look at this month, as you can see, if I was on the flexible tariff, that would have cost £45.31 without solar. If I didn't have solar and I was on the Intelligent Octopus Go tariff, that would have cost me £30.34. And if I was using the tracker tariff, it would have cost me £27.51. So interestingly, slightly cheaper this month on the tracker tariff. And the actual cost with solar was minus £7.44, which is fantastic for February. From the saving sessions earnings as well, I made £8.19 off those three sessions. And the savings without solar when compared to the flexible tariff was £60.94. The Intelligent Go savings would have been £37.78 and the savings without solar on the tracker tariff would have been £34.95. So interestingly the tracker seems to be the cheaper option this month and that gives a cumulative saving of £1,506.62 when compared to the flexible tariff. And the remaining payback, remember my system cost just under £11,000 and the remaining payback is now £9,473.38, roughly. And if we look at the car usage, 372 kilowatt hours used in the car 
and on the Intelligent Octopus Go tariff that cost me just £30 to fill and that would have cost me around about £170 to do the same miles in my old diesel car. So that's a big saving on the fuel of £140.74 this month. So if we add that fuel saving onto the total for the amount saved with the solar as well, that equates to £201.68 for the month. And although I tend not to include the savings in the cumulative savings for fuel, um, because I would have been on the Intelligent Octopus Go tariff anyway, um, I always just put this on there and that equates to a cumulative savings of £2,500 now. So bills overall for February, we have a standing charge of £14.09. The total charge for electricity was £32.32 ,32 for both the EV and power in the home. Export equated to a credit of £17.28 and the saving sessions equated to £8.19. And if we add the gas usage on there, we used 1,553.83 kilowatt hours. So that's dropped, I think it was around about 2,000 last month. So that's dropped off quite significantly as the weather's got slightly warmer. We have a standing charge of £7.89 for gas for the month and the overall charge is £66.78. So that equates to £95.61 for the month for powering my home, my electric vehicle and heating my house and also providing hot water as well. So considering I would have spent around about £170 on fuel with my diesel car that I used to have last year alone, £95 for everything is absolutely fantastic and I'm very happy with that. So that's it for this month's stats. Like I said, be sure to let me know in the comments how you got on this month. And don't forget to like and subscribe to keep up to date with more goings on on the channel following my journey. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.